this War of Mine is a simple game, but simple doesn't equal easy, and this War of Mine is anything but easy. And that's why I made this video, to help you better understand how the game works, what you should do, and what you should avoid. This is how to play this War of Mine. A beginner's guide. This War of Mine is no different than any other survival game out there. You will steal, you will kill, and you will lose if you keep on doing those things. You explore the city, scavenge supplies, fight soldiers, find hobos, meet friends, meet enemies, steal wood, get depressed, go home, defend your base, and keep your survivors warm, fed, and healthy. Not specifically in that order. You build and craft during the day and scavenge for supplies during the night. It's one of those games that once you play it, it's rather difficult to not replay it. For this video, I'm gonna focus on everything that I think is good for new players to know while at the same time keep it as spoiler free as possible, such as the first 7 days, nighttime which includes scavenging and combat, daytime which includes resource management and crafting, and all 5 character states, hunger, wounds, illness, tiredness, and mood. And with that, let's start with the first 7 days. Now, I already made a video concerning the first 7 days of this war of mine, but since this is a beginner's guide, I'll try my best to summarize what I've said before, while at the same time keep it as comprehensive as possible. Ready? Here we go. The first thing you want to do is to loot everything in your home, from cabinets to rubble to just plain old wood. You'll need as much supplies as you can get, as that's what you'll need to build the appropriate workshops required to survive. Speaking of workshops, second is that you need to build a metal workshop, as that is where most of your tools will come from, from saw blades to crowbars to even weapons such as knives and guns. This is self-explanatory, you'll need those tools to survive. Third is that you need to build a stove, as that is the only way to prepare edible food. Fourth is to build a crowbar, a hatchet and a shovel, if you get the chance. Especially the hatchet, as it's both a wood gathering tool and a weapon all by itself. The last thing you want to do is to board up your shelter. It becomes an option the moment you build an advanced workshop. Having holes in the walls lowers down your shelter defenses and makes you more susceptible to being raided, and then wounded, and then stolen from. Not really something you want and you only really need to do this once, as those defenses don't really break once built. Again, I've already made a far more comprehensive video about this, and if you're curious, I'll leave a link right here. Nighttime starts at 7.30pm, and you'll have to be ready when it happens. When it does happen, you get to choose which one of your survivors sleep, guard the shelter, and who scavenges. But before that, a quick info about shelter defense. You'll always want to keep one person guarding the shelter at all times every time nighttime comes. It doesn't have to be the same person every night, just as long as you're always guarding it, while keeping everyone from being very tired. More on that later. Now, back to scavenging. Scavenging is actually one of my favorite parts of the game. Every night, you get to pick one survivor to get out and explore, looking for materials, medicine, food, parts, and even weapons. During this time, you also get to decide where to scavenge in the first place by picking and choosing a location on the map. Some locations have an abundance of one resource and a deficiency on another. This all depends on what type of location you're visiting. Some are abandoned and filled with loot, and some are inhabited and may or may not be dangerous depending on each location. A good way to know if it's dangerous out there is to read each location's history before you decide on checking out the location. This starts at 9pm and ends at 5am. If a survivor fails to leave the location before 5am, they'll have a much harder time going back home, and might even have problems along the way, such as arriving late or being wounded. Another thing to keep in mind is that killing innocents and stealing from them can and will affect your survivors negatively even if it's for self-defense or you don't get caught while doing it. This will result in instant depression, so don't kill and steal unless you absolutely need to. Second is that killing hostile civilians is fine as long as you have confirmed that they are, in fact, hostile. Some civilians might seem hostile at first simply because they're holding a gun, but you can't really tell who's hostile or not unless you read the location's history or you start listening in to their conversations. This War of Mine has a fairly basic combat system. It's interactive, it only happens when scavenging, and you only have to control one survivor. Although I must remind you guys to go into combat mode first before you get into combat. One can scavenge and do combat at the same time. Scavenging always starts with you being on scavenge mode. Being in scavenge mode disables combat mode. Being in combat mode disables scavenging mode. Basically, you can't scavenge and combat at the same time. 
and I've seen a lot of players having trouble with this simply because they forgot to turn combat mode on. If you want to do combat, turn combat mode on. I can't stress this enough. In terms of gameplay, it's pretty straightforward. Point where you want to go, click on who you want to attack, and hide where you want to hide. It might seem too simplistic at first, but this type of point and click combat can be deadly if you're not careful. Fighting purely in melee is based on RNG, meaning it's completely random and it might not always work on your favor. So there's that. Back to daytime, there's quite a few things you can do in daytime and almost all of it is significant in terms of keeping your survivors alive. You can build and craft whatever you want, but I personally would focus on building things you need rather than things that might look interesting. This is a survival game after all, and picking and choosing what to build can separate you from a bad decision to a right one. Now, everything and anything you can craft and build will require specific materials for you to build them, and it might not look like much, but there's really a limited supply of materials available on each location of the map. So again, build and craft what you need, but postpone on what you want. Building and crafting is easy. Go to the simple workshop, pick what you want to build, and point where you want to build it. A few of the things you build count as workshops themselves. Some examples are the metal workshop and the herbal workshop. Some of them are built for the sake of acquiring essential supplies, such as a stove and a rainwater collector. Every single item here has a general purpose, but not all of them are essential to surviving. You can't even build everything here in one playthrough. I should know, because I've tried. So pick what you think is best and go with it. You'll know what you need as you progress through the game. And if you're still confused, you can watch my guide right here. You have 14 hours during daytime to focus on crafting and satisfying your survivor's needs. These are commonly known as character states. Character states define what each one of your survivors feel and are. These are hunger, wounds, illness, tiredness, and mood. These all go up and down depending on the choices you make and how effective you are at keeping them alive. And the key to maintaining them stable is different depending on each character's state. Let's start with hunger. Hunger is probably one of the hardest things to maintain in this war of mine, and if you manage to keep it down and somewhat stable, you'll have everything else in the game far easier to deal with. When it comes to hunger, it's as easy as feeding your survivors food, and food by itself can be acquired in a multitude of ways. Then why is it so hard to maintain? That's because new players usually mistake a survivor being hungry as a sign to feed them, and that's not really the most effective way to do it. Every time a character state goes down, each survivor's effectiveness goes down with it, but not as much as you would think. In stage 1, well-fed characters are just that well-fed. That means they receive no advantages or disadvantages. Interestingly enough, that is true for being normal and even if they do get hungry. While they do complain about being hungry, there's actually no significant drawbacks that can affect your survivors, just endless whining. It's only until they get very hungry and so on where it starts to become a problem, such as a decrease in movement speed, sadness in the shelter, and possible death. Knowing this, it's a good idea to only feed your characters when they do start to become very hungry, as that is the only point where it starts to affect your gameplay. Anything else before that is fine and ignorable. It also gives you a couple more days to scavenge for food. You can also do it every two days or in multiples of twos, such as day two, four, six, eight, and so on and so forth. It's as effective as my first suggestion, although this time they get to have the content status effect which raises their mood and everyone else around them. Wounds in this war of mine only become a factor in combat scenarios while scavenging or during shelter defense. There's quite a few factors when it comes to being wounded, but I'm just just gonna say it like this. Being wounded is bad, and you can't get healed from it by sleeping alone. Worse is that it can even get well, worse, the further you keep it unattended depending on how severe it is. It would be best to patch it up as soon as possible as keeping it there for far too long is a sure way to kill your survivors, or at the very least, break your mood. More on that later. If you do get slightly wounded, it's usually fine as that one can be fixed over time just by sleeping. It's only when a character becomes wounded where it starts to become a problem. So keep your bandages safe and only use it when you need to. Bandages are really hard to come by and are extremely costly to craft and buy. And that's why I advise new players to avoid combat unless they absolutely need to or they are appropriately prepared. Obviously, things won't always go your way, so just do your best with whatever situation you happen to put yourself in. Just know that the game does implement an Odyssey feature which can never be turned off, as well as a permadeath feature. So try to be careful, you really don't want to get wounded. The main causality of illness is temperature. 
the colder it is, the far easier your survivors would get ill. From my experience, being slightly ill is somewhat okay as it can easily be brought down by simply going to bed at night or in the day. The best way to tell if it's too cold is by checking the thermometer. Any temperature below 15 is when it starts to become a big factor. Keep it up and high and you'll be fine. Eventually, winter will happen and when it does, build two advanced heaters and you'll be all set. Just know that you'll still need to fuel it up as the heater by itself won't do much on its own. Fuel can be easily crafted from books, components, and wood preferably wood as it's the most common material in the game. Tartness is mostly the same with illness with some minor differences. It's less dangerous as one only needs sleep to fix the issue. This character state is also the least complicated and to be honest the least problematic. The stages are normal, tired, very tired, exhausted, and extremely exhausted. Based on a quick google search, being extremely exhausted prevents all actions including building, crafting, eating, and scavenging. But to be honest, this is super easy to fix. Just sleep and you'll be good. And then there's mood. Mood is affected by anything and everything. And that's why I tackled this last. It goes down when your survivors get very hungry, sick, very tired, and wounded. This almost acts as a passive character state as this only goes up and down depending on how effective you are at managing every other character state. Get it down enough and it'll cause your survivors to become sad and eventually depressed. And as you would have guessed, that's not good. Sadness will cause your survivors to pause every now and then when they're performing actions. And depression will downright end their hope entirely and spread it with others. This is the point wherein you really have to try your best to keep mood up and going because if you wait long enough, they'll become broken. Being broken in the game is the worst thing that can happen as it's close to game over at this point. Survivors with a broken status will just absolutely refuse to do anything. They won't scavenge they'll stop eating food, and if they stay broken for more than a day, they'll leave the shelter, or worse, unalive themselves. The only way to save a broken survivor is for one other non-broken survivor to help him eat and get healed. You cannot make him or her sleep during the day since they will outright refuse to do that too, so you'll have no choice but to do it at night. Don't lose hope though as as long as you have an extra non-broken survivor and enough resources, you can still bring that mood up. If not, well, pray that the war ends the next day. Surviving this war of mine is no easy task, and while it might look like an easy game due to its style and mechanics, it's really quite difficult once you sink a couple of hours into the game. This war of mine might be a simple game, but it's not an easy game, and there's a lot of things that you can do to keep your survivors alive and okay. Well, somewhat okay. The goal is to survive, and how you survive is completely up to you, and how you act through your choices and decisions. And I hope this video was enough to teach you how to play this war of mine. If you watched this whole video and you still find it somewhat incomplete, then click on this video more focused on the tips and tricks as you play through this war of mine, including everything I learned, gathered, thought of, and found online. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what is your worst experience playing this war mine. I've had some characters die a couple of times, but what else is new?